Good evening, everyone. This is Mujeres de Maíz, is We Rise Programming 2022. I am Felicia Montes, and today is Maestra Monday. We're so excited to have one of our femtors, an amazing veteranas, elders, and community maestras and guide and leader in the community, Linda Vallejo. Again, Mujeres de Maíz is part of the We Rise uh, Well-Being Month, which is May 2022, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, and part of Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health is doing a programming with different programs and community-based organizations throughout Los Angeles County. Part of our programming is online ofrendas or offerings, and so one of them is Maestra Mondays. Well, it's a series of platicas or chats speaking with different maestras in the community. So we're really honored today and excited to speak to one of our um, dearest maestras or teachers and guides, and that is Linda Vallejo. And I want to tell you a little bit about Linda um, before I introduce her. And Linda is an artist. Um, she's a veteran artist, also community member, um, a ceremonial leader. She's also a grant writer and teaches people about grant writing. She's a past director of a gallery, um, she's a curator. She also consults in many ways, and she'll talk a little bit more about that. But she's a, you might have seen her work from 20 to 30 years ago at Self-Help Graphics or photos of her. She's been part of dozens and probably hundreds of exhibits, um, including uh, some of the most famous more recently through the Getty and others. So I'd really love to honor somebody who I consider and our mujeres de maíz or women of the corn consider not only a maestra, but a guide elder and an artist um, and cultural leader in our community across East Los Angeles and part of our community. So welcome Linda Vallejo. Welcome Linda. Hi, thank you for having me. Yes, we're so excited to have you. Um, you know, Linda has dropped gems of knowledge to us as a true maestra has and can for many, many way, years and in many ways. Not all, we can be in the gallery and she'll say, you know, um, check out this or what about this and give us thought provoking questions. Or we can be in a ritual or a circle, a tall woman circle and, you know, drop gems of wisdom from her experience. So for any of you watching today, um, we do have a chat where you can speak a little bit more, um, you know, whether you're on YouTube, uh, Twitter, or on our Facebook page, feel free to say hello if you um, see a, f a good friend or if you know Linda. And also if you have questions or comments, we might be taking some. And also of course, repost this so that others are able to log into this live. And also that you know, um, this will be recorded and let um, forever on our YouTube as well as our Facebook page. So Linda, I know I introduced a little bit about you, but you have so many facets, so multifaceted um, Chicana Indígena, a multifaceted woman, a multifaceted leader, and also a multifaceted artist in many interests and ways that you do your art. Tell us a little bit, introduce yourself, um, the way you feel comfortable. Well, you've done a really good job. I mean, my life is multifaceted. Um, being an artist demands that you uh, work in many different areas to be able to uh, function as an artist, move ahead as an artist. I uh, always believe that uh, the fullest life is what I wanted to live as a young woman. I decided that I wanted to be an artist. Of course, it was the first thing I decided as a small child. I knew that I wanted to be a mother uh, when I was in high school and college, like many of us. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to have a spiritual core and a spiritual center to my life. And now those three things of family, spiritual core, and art are basically the driving forces of my life. And you have to uh, work on all of them simultaneously to be able to find uh, the fullest um, experience possible to make your decisions, to set your goals, and to work diligently towards the person that you would like to be and the things that you would like to accomplish in your life. You're so eloquent and always just, you know, bringing some of the basics of like balance, um, all the interests, but also the callings that you've had. I feel like for some, they might be interested in callings. For some, they are gifts and medicines. Um, and I know you see them in, in those different ways. And that's a little bit different about who our maestras see, uh, are. And like you, you see them as ofrendas. You see them as offerings. You see them as medicines. And so when you share these words, even if it's just about, you know, 
from everything from a grant to <laughs> to an art piece or how to start a fire or something you know you um ground, you're so grounded in what you do um solid in what in what you do um is the best kind of term or word mm -hmm. i can really talk about i'd love to hear about and, you know you do so much can you tell us a little bit about some of those projects um you know maybe one by one because i know they're kind of different compartments but they're to you still part of mm -hmm. everybody everything that is linda Vallejo. well <clears throat> you know when you build a life and you literally build a life like you build a fire you know you're very uh, mm. conscious of all the steps that you take when you build a fire the way that you prepare the wood and lay out the wood and the sage that you put and the tobacco that you lay there and the way that you start the fire and how you tend it <clears throat> and life is very much like that ceremony uh, every day is a ceremony i know we've all heard that every day is a ceremony and you want to have a good day it's been a good day today. I've gotten a lot done. I feel good about myself. Um, and it has to be on multiple levels. And so when I make my art, I pretty much treat it in the same fashion. I have an idea. I want to bring it to fruition. And I complete it in the very best way that I know how. I don't put out artwork that I don't think is complete. I make something really finished and as beautiful as I know how to make it before I place it into the world. And these days, as you can see around me, I am painting the whole world brown to begin a conversation about the politics of color, class, and privilege. Um, what does it mean to be a person of color in the United States today? What does it mean to be a third generation Mexican American in the United States today, a woman and an artist? How does one navigate the world? How does one how does one become successful in their own eye? And how can one be sure that the world sees what you're producing and listen to your message? I, Mother's, it was Mother's Day in the United States yesterday. Yes, and happy Mother's Day. It was a beautiful day. My goal for to, yesterday was to connect with my granddaughters, uh, you know, to hug my son, to hug my daughter-in-laws, to talk to my son in Arizona, to send flowers to my daughter-in-laws, to meet with my mother and my sister. But more importantly than any of those was to connect with my daughter, my, my granddaughters, six and four, Honor Elizabeth and Millie. And I work very hard, just like a ceremony, beginning the day, thinking of them, planning for them, making the foods that they like. We went to the beach and had a discovery day where we collected shells and little pieces of driftwood and a little bucket and watched, walked the beach. And when we got there, all the rocks were showing because it was low tide. And my six-year-old, Honor, said, there seems to be more rocks here this time, Grandma. And I said, that's because the tide is out. But pretty soon the tide's going to come in. And she walked out into the rocks, really uh, a good uh, 200 yards. And slowly but surely I said, watch the tide, watch the tide. And she actually experienced in live mm. time, not just talking about it or trying to explain it, but she saw the water coming in and she could see it growing at her feet. And you could see the knowledge on her face. You could see her learning something mm. real. And we had a beautiful lunch together. And that, of course, yesterday, a Mother's Day with my granddaughters was a ceremony as well, was a completion of the day. And I feel really good about, I felt really good at the end of the day. I thought we had a beautiful time together became closer in relationship, just like in circle. You have circle and your goal is to get closer in relationships, to have a meaningful moment, uh, 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 to, to experience a revelation of some kind in your own level, right? And to close a circle with everyone feeling good as if the day ended well. I also am a consultant to artists and to nonprofit organizations and my job is to help them get ahead. That's my job. My job is to help them make their dreams come true and to get ahead. And I work very hard. I try to share as much as I can about my knowledge in the nonprofit world and fundraising and also for artists to expand their careers. And I share the knowledge that I have from my experiences at Galeria Las Americas, from my experiences in the uh, Chicano art movement, as well as the national and international art movement, to tell artists and to share with artists the best that I know how. Uh, so when one um, family, ceremony, art, and of course, Security through business. That's what one of the uh, elements of my life is security through business building and through mm -hmm. regular mm -hmm. income. 
and to maintaining a, a lifestyle of safety and security through good health, good mental health, um, all of the types of security that a woman wishes for, for herself, her children, and her family, right? So I work on these things that I think if you just stop, I think that's one of the keys is just to stop and mm. be where you are now. I, today I was working making these flower arrangements with They're my beautiful. very so beautiful and florist. Um, and we had to stop and work on the flower arrangements. It took many hours to paint the, uh, the antique of uh, Victorian um, vase uh, and to prepare it for the flowers and to paint all the flowers brown again, because it's all a conversation about the color brown what it means to be brown, but to mm -hmm. stop in front of anything that you do just for a moment, to stop for the day and say, today is the day that I'm spending with my family. Today is the day I'm spending with my art. Today is the day I spend with my business and helping my clients. Today is the day I spend with my, my grandchildren. But to mm -hmm. stop the moment and to have an opportunity to actually have a revelation of some kind, to understand mm -hmm. something, to see something, to share something, is really uh, helps you make it through the years as they go flying by. Beautiful, you know, the intentionality, not only of what you're doing and your art, and the intentionality in every community, every circle, every space um, that you walk in is really beautiful and, and admirable. Um, it's in your voice, it's in the way you walk, it's in your art. Um, and it's in the work that you do. And so I think that's why all um, so many of us <laughs> are fans in many ways, you know, um, you know, how you're able to really balance the community work, the ceremonial circles and spaces, um, the home life, what you're sharing right now with your granddaughter and mm -hmm. a happy Mother's Day to you as you've also been like a, a tia, mama, and maestra for Mujeres de Maíz. And I know you have a beautiful family and children that have been, a, and grandchildren that have been a part of um, your community and your spaces and have also seen many of these roads and ways have seen you in these different circles and spaces. And so what a beautiful example. What a beautiful um, example of a maestra for us. And we're hoping, you know, that people continue to um, maybe repost this or share this and um, take a look at it Tiempo. There's so much going on, right? In social media, there's so much going on in the world that things go really quickly. And and I really appreciate um, your breath, you know, the intentionality. Um, it reminds me to like calm, calm down <laughs> and breathe and and also take in this time with you, where for me, oftentimes it's like, oh, we're going live. Thank you. Do this. But that it like mm -hmm. allows us to even feel that way and mm -hmm. and even through this virtual reality um, connect mm -hmm. with the, uh, and honor our communities and honor our bodies and minds and hearts, which is part of this well-being journey that we're all mm -hmm. on. Um, and that Mujeres and Maes really wants to talk about through through this chat and through this platica and through this month of well-being mm -hmm. um, and we rise. So you do have many different creations and spaces. I know that, um, your identity journey and connection, um, locations, mm -hmm. how you grew up, um, you know, can you share a little bit about maybe your mm -hmm. identity and well-being journeys from um, mm -hmm. how, you, you know, some of the art that you did have come to or the places and centers that you've been a part of or circles have, have supported you um, or that you have supported? Well, oh, gee, that's a 70-year-old story. <laughs> um, we have my some time. <laughs> My father was a retired colonel in the Air Force. Uh, he graduated from UCLA in 1951. My grandparents and my great-grandparents worked in the fields in California. My mother was born in Concord, California, a uh, grape city. My dad was born in San Angel of Texas. Um, you know, poor roots, but beautiful roots. And because he entered the Air Force as an officer, uh, graduated from UCLA, we uh, lived in East LA while he was in school. I did, I was the only child at the time. I was followed by my brother, Tom, and my sister, Roseanne. Later, we moved to Germany. And I spent uh, my formative years, three to five, in Germany. And really learned to see the world as a much bigger place. Um, 
I've traveled a great deal, a lot in Europe, a great deal in the United States, a great deal in Mexico. I've been to China and to Canada. And um, I just saw the world as a very large place and a, a, a place to discover and to learn new things and to find new things, um, to be a student and to love discovery. And I still uh, read incongruous materials. I read, um, right now I've spent the last couple of years reading the great uh, writers of the, America, of the United States in, in the 1920s and in 30s and 40s. And now I'm doing Russia, if you can imagine. I'm doing Chekhov. There's so much to learn in so many places. And I believe that if we open up our hearts to incongruous and unusual forms of learning, that we'll find that our world, our personal world, will get bigger as well. So when I came back to the United States to go to graduate school, I came back to Los Angeles. I have, at the time, I had four great grandparents living in East LA and a few living in Mexico still and great uncles and tons of cousins, just like so many of us. So many of us that came up through Chihuahua and to Texas and across the Southwest. We have so much in common. And I went to school, uh, I went to Whittier, I graduated from Whittier College. <clears throat> and then I came back and got my MFA at Cal State University, Long Beach. I put myself through graduate school. I worked and did factory work and I modeled for art classes and I waited tables to work my way through graduate school and so I went to a school that I could afford and had a great print making department. I was really fortunate to be in graduate school with a lot of wonderful students, uh, my peers, including some Chicano notaries, uh, John Valadez and Teddy Sandoval were there during my time. And I got a job at Self Up Graphics. As a teacher on the Vadio Mobile Art Studio, Sister Karen hired me, which I'm always very proud to say. And I spent uh, about almost eight years at Self Up Graphics, uh, mm -hmm. six of those, of the Vadio mobile, mobile Arts Studio. When I was in Europe, I had a great opportunity several times to go to, I don't know how many cathedrals I went to. I went to uh, the catacombs. I visited Rome several times. I was in um, many of the, the Roman areas of Spain because I lived in Spain for about four years total. I went to high school and one year of college there. And I love ancient cultures. I still do. I love traditional and ancient cultures. And I studied a lot about Europe and learned a great deal about Europe because I enjoyed it so much. And even as a 15, 16 year old, I wanted to go to Africa, which I never made, I'm sorry to say, to see the Congo before it was destroyed. I had a sense that indigenous cultures were being, just, you know, were disappearing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even as a very young woman, and even at that time, I decided that the Catholic church was not for me. And I began, I left the Catholic church at 15, and began looking for a different wow. spiritual way of seeing the world. When I came back and found self up graphics, of course, I found Mexico. I found Mexico mm -hmm. and uh, made a lot of sense. I mean, I spoke Spanish after being in Spain. It was beautiful to travel in Mexico. And I loved the ceremonial sites. I must have done all the ceremonial sites, many of them more than once, many of them three times. Um, mm -hmm. the, sacred, the sacred sites were just I, there was something about them. You know how they are. They're magical. Mm -hmm. they draw you. And there's a beautiful sense of history and ritual and imagery. And it's just, they're just wonderful, wonderful spaces. And I love them very much. And at the time at Self Up Graphics, we were studying the Day of the Dead. And I was collecting books in Mexico about the Day of the Dead and bringing them back to California to, to begin developing our study and our understanding of the Via de los Muertos. Wow. And... When I was in LA, I had a chance to see the Flores de Aslan. I believe it was in uh, Sacramento with the, with the Royal Chicano Air Force and the Fiesta de Colores. And when I saw the Flores de Aslan and my maestra, Josefina Gallardo, and my good sisters there, I just really loved it. It was just, it was very beautiful. And Can you I, tell us a little bit about what it was for people who are listening and don't know what the Flores de Aslan is? Well, you know, many people uh, recognize Azteca dancers. They know Azteca dancers. Everyone does. They're at all the festivals, you know, celebrations. Well, this wasn't Azteca danza, although we did do some Azteca danza. Most of what we did was choreographed by Josefina Gallardo, and it was based on Mayan danza, which was very feminine and very flowing and very feminist. Um, like you say, femtor. I found my femtors. Mm. And 
flowing gowns and floral garlands and very beautiful lyrical dances. And none of us were dancers except for Josefina, but we all learned how to express ourselves freely as dancers within the context of ceremonial dance, which is basically symbolic dance, where every movement, every image has a meaning. And I've always loved studying history and culture and uh, philosophy and religion. It's always been an interest of mine in college and graduate school. And so the danza really made it possible for me to experience it just like my granddaughter experienced the ocean. It wasn't about reading about it or being told about it. It was about actually being within it, much like ceremony, being within ceremony. And I loved it so much. I just took a headlong dive into it and found myself dedicated for all the rest of my life. Um, danza, including danza in uh, uh, the United States with Native American peoples from the United States, different types of ceremony, taking my children to ceremony, uh, becoming a part of bear circles in California, doing volunteer work in the prison systems, conducting ceremony in multiple circles throughout Southern California with my first invitation being from John Funmaker, who was a Sundance brother of mine who asked me if I would go to see RC to spend time in circle with the women. And it's, um, let's see, I think it would be, it's close to 40 years now. It's close to 40 years that I've been involved in ceremonia. Um, and I, so I found the religion that I was looking for. And it's not mm. really so much religion as it is a spiritual practice. And I think I've outlined pretty much what the spiritual practice is about. You uh, begin each day with a ceremony and you end it with a ceremony. Every action is a ceremony, every relationship is ceremony and things must be thought out carefully. When you go to ceremony, your goal, when you're conducting ceremony, your goal is that everyone uh, not necessarily enjoy themselves, but not become injured in any way. They're not injured. You may have a very profound encounter in ceremony that isn't necessarily enjoyable because it could be difficult. It could be something that you weren't expecting, but you feel that you have support you feel that it was a good thing to think about and to and to and to realize, and everyone leaves without any physical hurt as well. Because you know, in ceremony, there's fire, there's the earth, there's big rocks, <laughs> you know, there's the elements, mm -hmm. and so a leader is expected to take care of um, those who are participating in circles. So I I got into ceremony, and after I had my children, I wanted to say thank you. And the way that I said thank you was by volunteering and being involved. I want to say thank, thank you to the gods. These days I pray for Wewendeo because I'm getting older now. I ask the sun to help me and the moon, of course, Goyo Shauki. But I ask Wewendeo to please help me out here as I get older and find out who I really am, what I'm, who I'm, who I, how I will end this great ceremony of life. And I can mm. only hope that I complete it in a way that is honorable, an honorable way. Um, remembered as being uh, hardworking and caring and uh, transparent and loving. Uh, one of my really wonderful teachers, Seneca Oneida Twyla Nietzsche said, um, what's my purpose in being here today? What um, balance and harmony am I bringing to where we are together today? What chaos am I bringing to this gathering today, this place that I've come to, and how will I be remembered when I'm gone? And basically that's your ultimate question, right? How will I be remembered? So it's a big question. One never knows, uh, one never knows where one's strength is and one never knows where one's weaknesses are either. They're always a surprise. You know, you always think, you know, you might think that you can handle it and then all of a sudden you can't handle it. Or you might think that you can't handle it, and all of a sudden you show strength and courage. So ceremony has been very important to me. It's been very important to raising my sons. I believe they were very lucky to, um, as young boys, to be able to become men in ceremony. And I think it's given them the strength of character that I see in them as fathers and sons, fathers and husbands. And I'm yes. very glad that I was able to give that to them because I felt it as a um, 
an obligation and a responsibility that if I was going to experience ceremony, that I needed to share that with my children. Being an artist is a really big ball of wax. It's a very different thing. Um, about 20 years ago, I sat down and asked myself, well, do you want to go head on into ceremony or do you want to continue as an artist? And I decided that um, this is a gift that was given to me as a very small child and that I needed to discover and to unravel this gift as completely as I could. And that's what I've been working on for the last 20 years to find out what my art really is and what it has to offer. And interestingly enough, as soon as I did that, I, I found that I had what I call my brown intellectual property. And being a mm -hmm. Mexicana, a Chicana, Latinx, Latinx, Chicanx, <laughs> Indianx, that I have a lot of information to share and it all comes forward in this um, hundreds of works that I'm creating uh, um, that's now I'm calling now the objects of opulence. It was called Make Them All Mexican, then the Brown Dot Project, then Datos Sagrados, all data-based um, pictographs. Mm -hmm. For the Mex Make Them All Mexican was just painting old antiques brown so that Elvis Presley became brown. Marilyn Monroe became brown, all the presidents, all the cartoons, everyone, the world, all of a sudden became brown, which was sort of my, a, a sort of a funny fantasy. And uh, the Brown Dot Project and uh, Datos Sagrados were all about making pictures out of data surrounding the U.S. Latino um, population, health, mental health, uh, employment, education, all this data that was uh, translated into object. And now I'm talking about um, privilege, wealth and privilege. And, mm. uh, who deserves it? Everyone deserves it. And we need to begin the conversation talking about uh, giving yourself, well, many people talk about this, allowing yourself abundance, allowing yourself security, allowing yourself good health, making plans for abundance, for security, for good health. You know, to see yourself, your body, your mind, your spirit, your physicality as meaningful and working towards balanced, good health in your life. How was that? Beautiful. Um, you know, you went into your journey with ritual and ceremony and um, reconnecting, reconnecting with um, indigenous ways and, and ceremonia and Oh, ofrendas of well-being um, through uh, your responsibilities or your guidance for so many, you know, from from being from helping and guiding in the prison systems to circles like Mujeres de Maiz or to others, but then also to the art and how it was for you from a very young age, um, something that was a gift and your medicine, but also something another kind of almost responsibility because of the information, the knowledge, the education that you have as a Mexican uh, Chicanx woman and a Chicana Indigena woman and, and what you can share and teach so many others, right? Through your example and through your art and through your beautiful art. So we have some things in the chat. There's a, um, you know, uh, the true abundance of our goddesses, Datos Sagrados, they love the, the name of it. Um, Really like the idea of like woman, uh, woman tour, femme tour um, that we have mm -hmm. here. Um, and I'll, I'll bring that, there is a question, but I'll, I'll bring that a little bit later in terms of um, okay. what we can possibly offer. Um, or some what, other what I would like to say, what I would like to say really is um, to follow your gifts um, and not to allow other people to decide what your gifts are. Uh, to enjoy your gifts, to nurture your gifts, and to make a commitment through your gifts. Um, don't allow other people to tell you what you should or should not do, but follow not only your heart, but your mind and your, your, your the center of your being. Make a good choice. I, I spent a year, as they call it, indigenous style, praying on this choice mm -hmm. between ceremony and art. Make mm. a good choice. Make a strong choice, but find yourself and follow yourself mixed with good, good health, mental, spiritual, psychological, and physical. And it takes time to um, really pay attention. I mean, it's as simple as watching your diet or making sure that you get exercise or making sure that you read 
you know, like reading is a, almost a lost art, but it's very important for mental health mm. to expand mm. knowledge. So to take the time to develop your, your gift and make a commitment to your gift and follow it through. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, we have um, some love as we were posting, you know, like the hearts and other things in the chat. And I think um, people who have been in circle with you over the years or have got to meet you or see your art, maybe on the cover of Mujeres de Maiz <laughs> zine, or in the does, a, you know, different um, one woman shows, one person shows that you've had, your solo shows, like a Plaza de Cultura y Artes mm -hmm. in the last couple of years or others that are coming up. Um, really show that path of what you're doing, you know, the different paths, but also how they intersect. And that decision of, yes, focusing on your art, which is um, how held you together, held your family together, well-being wise, um, but also bringing in these other like datos sagrados or all the under information and knowledge that you've held and, and were um, able to be gifted through the years, whether it was through a ceremony or traveling or from your own family or um, community members. Um, we really did want to see about, uh, you kind of shared a little bit about uh, women and indigenous women, um, but I wanted to see if you've had like, um, as a femtor, as a woman on the uh, the Red Road and also with the artist communities and um, also uh, a consultant, right? You're really teaching or guiding, you know, organizations to find more funds or organizations to work better, to be better, to interact better work together more. Um, are there some key things that you would want to share with some of um, the people maybe listening, which are mainly women and femmes, but mm -hmm. also it's all community members around some of the key lessons? Now, you've shared a lot of that, but if there's other thoughts that you yeah. um, well, you um, share with our community. If you're interested in starting a nonprofit organization, just remember that grant writing is not your only way to find support for what you do. I'm working with a nonprofit organization, two of them actually right now, where we're developing, we're, we're doing what they call fees for service, where mm -hmm. the members of the organization actually have skills that they can provide to the community. And they look for collaborative partners who are getting grant funds from other sources to pay them to do their, to provide the services in their community. So that if you are a, um, uh, if you provide classes of any kind, as an example, if your staff provides classes of any kind, and they do that, and you offer those classes as a part of your nonprofit, you can also be paid by another nonprofit organizations to come to their location and offer those classes there. So you gather a group of collaborative partners who have their own funds coming in from different locations who are paying you to go to their location to teach, to consult, to present for their, for their communities. And um, so you have grants, you have fees for service, uh, you also have sales, and you have interest, and you have, of course, special events. Everyone knows special events, but that is not all that you have that you can do. Nonprofits function just like for profits. The only difference is at the end of the year, the funds have to be carried over to the next year, and there's certain kind of tax doc documentation that must be submitted mm -hmm. to the IRS. But you can make money in every way that you make as an entrepreneur. And 33% of all female entrepreneurs in the United States are Latina. Uh, this is data from the Pew Charitable Trust, Latino Initiative. And so we are natural entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so I, I encourage those of you, women and men, Latinos, who enjoy uh, the nonprofit world to remember that grants are not the only way. Grants and individual donations are not the only way. That you also have sales and you also have fees for service. In terms of an artist, what I would suggest first and foremost is that you create a package that everyone expects from you. Uh, just, it's a very basic package. It's not too complicated. It's basically an artist statement, an artist bio, uh, a curriculum vitae, or a, a resume. And um, you can go as far as to create a proposal package of an exhibition that you would like to present, but the resume, the bio, and the uh, statement, which artists sometimes are afraid of, but there's nothing to be afraid of. It's just words on paper. <laughs> um, and I do these kind of, this kind of work with my clients uh, editing their materials. But if you have a good package together, you'll find that everyone 
from museums to galleries to curators to educators to scholars all want to see some part if not all of the package so if you have a package ready and then you're ready to present yourself um, uh, at a moment's notice uh, obviously a website is a must these days mm -hmm. and uh, social media presence is not as important as a website if you are a, a fine artist. If you're a fine artist and want to get exhibitions, I mean, you can do some, you can do some sales on Instagram and uh, you can post events on Facebook, but what uh, gallerists and scholars and educators want to see is a, is a good website and also this package. I have also been uh, suggesting to artists to create a small brochure that can be attached to emails when they meet uh, individuals that they would like to reach out to. I call it reach out and respond. Reach out and respond. Everyone that you that you meet who shows some interest in your work, you simply write to, thank them for their time, and send a small brochure as a follow-up. I think a lot of artists are afraid to communicate with galleries mm -hmm. and museum mm -hmm. curators because they're just not sure of the communication levels. But it's it's nothing more than formal, friendly, well, I would call it friendly, professional, and short. And the small brochure goes a long way in just telling someone who you are and what you do connected with the website. That's how people function. That's how grantors to artists function too. That's how grantors to nonprofit organizations function as well. They go to the website to see if, to see how uh, accomplished the organization is or how accomplished the artist is. So that would be uh, two pieces of advice that I would give to nonprofits and to artists. Amazing. And I think, uh, you know, we want to put on uh, Linda's website, which is scrolling and as well as her Instagram. And she also has, of course, Facebook and other um, website information that you can kind of find out not only about her artwork, but um, her work, her consulting work, which is leading, you know, amazing nonprofits to the next level or artists to the next level or both. Um, and we've seen that and you've done that for a very long time in terms of sharing. And so I think that's what we love, I think, about um, one of the many things that we love about you, Maestra Linda and Vallejo, is really that you excel and are grounded and um, really exceed expectations and are really focused and always giving back in each of your circles, um, whether it's a ceremony or an artist space um, or nonprofit work or grants and et cetera you are leading the way and pushing forward, but also remembering those who, um, you know, might need some help <laughs> and support. Mm -hmm. and, and you do that in such a structured and very matter of fact way um, in terms of things, you know, this is how it's done and this is what you need to do, whether it's, a, you know, a prayer that you're sharing or an art piece or a how-to on a brochure, right? So it's really, I really appreciate that about you. And I think, um, I think a lot of the others um, do well, too. I want that's why we I want to encourage our I wanted to encourage our viewers too to look at my grant writing website. Yes. Which is atozgrantwriting.com. A T O Z grantwriting.com. A to Z. And you can find me. You'll know it's me because you'll see my picture on the home page. It's very easy to find me. But all of the services that I provide to nonprofits and artists are there, and everyone can see what's what, what's provided. And there's a lot of hints and tools. Awesome. And yes, various of the Mujeres and Mice have been through the A to Z grant writing. And so it's important to, to check out. It's another path. Um, you know, we're talking about it is May. We're part of this We Rise programming. This is our series of for those of you who might just be joining us or popped onto the Facebook or YouTube live. Um, we are with We Rise uh, programming of We Rise Mujeres and Mice. This is a, a whole program on well-being um, for the month of May. These are our online ofrendas through Mujeres de Maíz of Four We Rise. Um, and this digital experience is really an initiative of the Los Angeles Department of County, County Department of Mental Health um, that encourages well-being and healing through art, connection, and community engagement. So what better maestra than Linda Vallejo to share about art, connection, and community engagement, the ways that she has done that with different organizations, spaces, galleries, communities, families, centers, um, rehabilitation centers, centros, individuals, right? And all these different communities and spaces. So um, what important work we've shared some of the websites, both the A to Z grantwriting.com, but also, I mean, you can stop, you know, um, pause it to check it out if you need it, or also 
Linda's um, Instagram and also website that focuses a little bit more on her art. Um, this is Maestra Mondays with La Naveja. We do have two more Maestra Mondays um, that we would like to invite everybody to and to be a part of. Um, and we're really thankful to Revise for sponsoring this, for honoring, understanding that art um, and cultura and connection and community are intertwined and they're not kind of separate um, in these ways that our community, our peoples, our indigenous ways and our culture specifically have always seen those together, whether we're dancing for health, we're dancing for prayer or, or spirituality or we're um, painting for that. Um, and mm -hmm. so it's a beautiful, beautiful way that you're sharing. Linda, I'd love to hear some information or updates about your upcoming projects or exhibits. Um, mm -hmm. And then also maybe some other um, you know, art, art pieces or other ideas. Can you share a little bit more about some of the things that as part of your well-being as an artist and your mm -hmm. well-being as a, um, a cultural person and connection of some things that are pop coming up that might some of our audience might want to take a look at or um, take a visit? Oh, uh, yes. If you go to my artist website on the front page, there's a scrolling um, series of boxes. It'll show you all the shows that I'm up in now. I'm actually working, as I said, on a series of pieces called the Objects of Opulence. And they're about the politics of color, class, and privilege. And interestingly enough, at, well, presently, I am up in um, through the 15th of this month, which I believe is Sunday, at Bermuda's Projects in Cypress Park. And it is the first iteration of Objects of Opulence. If you can imagine all these brown objects behind me in a room that's painted with polka dot brown wallpaper and floor coverings. So I have antique objects of furniture painted brown with a multitude of different types of antique objects that make an interior, in this case, a sitting room with actual antique chairs and data-based objects on the wall and upholstery as well that create this all brown polka dot environment. And if you go to my Facebook page and to my Instagram page and also to LinkedIn, you can see some of these images as well as on my website. I've been working on this particular project for four years and I'm very pleased at this first iteration of it to create this brown, milk chocolate brown environment that begins to create a space, not just an object, but a space that talks about this very complex uh, understanding of what Latinos do in the United States. Uh, we are the um, seventh largest economy in the world, U.S. Latinos, um, by uh, gross national product. If we were a nation, we would be the seventh largest in the world. Uh, we contribute a great deal to the gross national product of the United States. We were here when the railroads, the railroads were built from Texas to California, mm -hmm. in the Santa Fe. We worked that, we built the backbone, if you will, of American culture, of American economy. And these are many of the topics that are discussed in the data works involved with this. I'm also in a show called LA Memo at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. Uh, and uh, uh, supported with and in collaboration with the Altamed Foundation. And it is a beautiful show of Chicanos uh, from uh, Los Angeles that were pr producing work in the 70s and the 80s. And I have a, a, a rather unusual video that I produced in the mid 1970s called Take a Bite, which is very uh, beautiful and very sexy. Um, it, it, but it's, you know, it, it's rated, it's rated M, let's say it's rated M. And uh, a sculpture and also a print is in there, mm -hmm. but there's many major works by Chicano artists that are very renowned in Los Angeles. And I'm going on Thursday to the University of British Columbia Museum of Anthropology to be a part of the Chicano show as well. And I'm also, that they're going to create a polka dot room for me within the, within the museum space it's gonna create another one of these polka dot rooms with a mixture of objects. Uh, I'm very, very excited to see it. I'll be going on Thursday and staying through Sunday, being a part of panels and discussions and walkthroughs and um, Beautiful. all kinds of, yes, just work, work, work. And let's see, there was another show that came to me and now it's left my mind. I'm up in four shows right now. Oh yes, I'm in uh, New Mexico 
in Albuquerque at the uh, Mexican American Art Center Museum. And uh, there's a series of pieces there surrounding um, the Brown Oscars, because I also have done Brown Oscars where the movie stars all become brown. And all these shows are on my website and you can see them in a block that kind of runs across. And if you click on the block, you can see all the details, mm -hmm. the spaces and uh, slideshows of the images as well. Presently, I'm working on creating, I've done a sitting room that you can see at Bermuda's Projects. And I sincerely hope if you're interested that you'll go take a look. I'm very proud of this work. And I'm working on a very uh, large uh, dining room installation, a complete um, Victorian dining room with all of the accoutrement, uh, all of the items included on this gigantic table in brown, all milk chocolate with the polka dot walls and flooring. And I'm working with Curator Look to help me find a venue for this location and support mm -hmm. for this, um, this, particular, this very large project. And it's been about four years in the making. And I'm very proud of the conversations that come up out of it, the value that it has uh, to discuss, um, you know, all of the conversation that's uh, really coming to the fore in the, this particular decade about people of color, their value to culture, their value to the economy, their human value, their dignity, their honor, what they have mm -hmm. to offer to the world as a whole. So one of the topics that come to mind, of course, is the idea of the unskilled worker. Well, Latinos are not the unskilled worker. Uh, it turns out that we are the skilled workers in this country. Mm -hmm. um, according to the Pew Charitable Trust, we will, Latino, Latinos, U.S. Latinos, it's all the Cubanos, Mexicanos, Puertoricanos, Sudamericanos, Centroamericanos, all of us, Mexicanos, Chicanos, all of us, are going to constitute 75% of all new jobs in the United States between now and 2034. How is that possible? Well, we're the bricklayers, we're the carpenters, we're the electricians, we're the plumbers, <laughs> we're the skilled workers. And I think this is a really big shock uh, because we've sort of been invisible for a long time, but the data is actually bringing it forward and I'm having a, a, a lot of fun sharing the good news uh, not all of it is good news. Some of our data is not that great. We need to enter into the professions more. We need to graduate from college and get into the professions. We have the workers. Now we need doctors and lawyers and all of the business owners, corporate business owners. We need all of these things. And I'm sure that we will find our way if we can just believe that we have all of the skills and all of the, the courage and all of the knowledge and uh, ability that's, that we need to be able to become uh, whatever we choose to be for ourselves and our children and future generations. Beautifully said, the different work coming together. Sorry, I was mm -hmm. muted for a second. But the different um, work coming together, um, the different ways and paths that you um, are a part of coming together to share whether through the art or the gallery space or the of the center so i really want to encourage people to take a look at linda's website lindavejo.com or instagram Linda Vallejo art um, again she mentioned the linkedin as well as the facebook um, page which she keeps updated and as well said that there's like a, a clicker just like ours that's moving or a ticker that's moving across or that's up there on our website where if you press you're able to know about the different four current web um, exhibits that she's in and some of the upcoming work um, that's there. I wanted to um, double check and just kind of see, um, there's some just hellos um, from people. Lily uh, Flor saying thank you for sharing, inspiring all of us. Um, Goddess powers, so people are just really um, appreciating some of the information, saying thank you um, and just loving kind of the work overall. Um, so thank you overall, Maestra, for that and for sharing your work, um, your path, your journey, your camino, your road with us, but also your beautiful creations. Um, we've always been very inspired by your work as, and we really appreciate that, you know, even when we were like a young collective, um, you were one of the first people um, that was brought up onto our stage to kind of honor along with um, one of our other femtours and veterana maestra, Xochimilco Portillo, 
and others, I think like 24 years ago <laughs> at one of our ago. events in East LA. Um, and so we've, you know, the interconnectedness, you've always been open to that. Um, whether we were still learning or we were, you know, little younger, like not knowing what we were doing, <laughs> even though sometimes we still think we're, we're not knowing what we're doing, you always are very open to to talk to us or to chat or to be a part of an art exhibit. And I, I think we really, really, um, we honor that, we understand that, we recognize that. So um, we have our maestra, uh, maestra from Lorena. She's a teacher at Venice High saying gracias maestra and always glad to be in um, your presence, um, even through virtual reality, very inspiring. Our Iris, uh, one of our well-being uh, practitioners, uh, Reiki masters, but also a poet and who will be also be a part of our well, um, We Rise Wellbeing programming. So great to see everybody here and kind of chiming in through the different virtual uh, platforms that we're on. Again, for anybody uh, taking a look at today, you can repost it. It will be stored on our um, both our Facebook page, Mujeres de Maiz, as well as our YouTube page. If you haven't already, subscribe both and follow our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you'll um, get notices of other live programming such as this um, and new videos that will pop up. And there's going to be at least 10 to 12, everything from workshops, presentations, platicas with other maestras throughout the month of May, culminating in a mural um, mm -hmm. that will be also streaming here and there um, by Lely Flor Art. So we have a very same nice talk and thank you. Happy faces, everything that you can. So there's some little bit of connection out there with our Maestra Monday. I wanted any other um, things, anything else you'd like to share or you know, maybe that you realized didn't mention or shout outs, <laughs> anything you'd like to do um, just to close out for today with our Maestra Monday. And of course, yes questions if there's any questions thank you um lily if there's any questions um or comments more comments go ahead and please um feel free to put those in the chat and we'll do our best to see if it um, connects um with our with our circle linda well i'd like to say thank you to the mujeres de maiz i'd like to say thank you for all the work that you do in the community and your dedication to the women and to the children I want to thank you for your dedication to the arts and to the physical, mental, and spiritual, uh, you know, mental health and physical well-being of the comunidad. I want to thank you for the dedication. What is it? Almost three decades of dedication that I know haven't always been easy. Um, it's a it's a long road. It's but it's a commitment, and if there's joy in that, there, there can be real joy and real accomplishment and a real feeling of accomplishment in that. So I want to thank all the Mujeres de Maiz that have worked with me over the years. I want to thank you for your invitations to be involved in your projects and in your publications and in your exhibitions and all of the ways that you've continued to include me in the circle and to welcome me to the circle and to honor me when I'm in the circle. It means a great deal to me. It helps me to feel good about myself, good about my life, good about my work. I'm so grateful to be in a circle of women um, in, 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 with, with so much joy, with so much joy and so much accomplishment. So I do want to thank you, each and every one of you. And thank you, Felicia, for all your good questions tonight. You're an inspiration. I learned from the best, <laughs> including you, the maestro. Muchas gracias, uh, Linda Vallejo, artist, grant writer, uh, consultant, mother, grandmother, and an amazing uh, ceremonial leader um, and just an overall amazing person. There are There is one question that actually Lily has that I want to put up and see if, it, see if you're open to that. One, yeah. And then we'll close out. Um, there was just like Georgia Joy, our quest for life. But one of them is that we've all been through a lot recently, right? Um, there yeah. was a lot of um, transition, both within our individual, um, within our cultural communities, um, uprisings, you know, people fighting for equality and justice um, in a righteous way. And we supported a lot of that, but it was a very, there's a lot of um, things happening, but also the pandemic and overall. So Lily's asking also as an artist, I think herself is, how did you manage during quarantine and um, now as an artist, grant writer, and the ceremony, and advice for us, words for wisdom, words of wisdom. 
is that? Well, you know, one of the most important things in life is to remain flexible. If you become rigid, uh, you'll get broken. It's very easy to get broken. So to remain flexible is very important in times of, uh, of stress, of uh, possibility of illness, in great turmoil, to be flexible, to be open, uh, to not make snap judgments, to, to settle with things as you, know, as you can, and to allow yourself the time that it takes to do that. Many artists uh, during the quarantine began saying things like, oh, I needed time off to be in my studio anyway. I'm very happy about it. And three months later, people started pulling their hair out because it's a very difficult world to be an artist and to be in your studio all the time producing. Um, it, it's lonely. Artists are social beings. They, don't, not, they not only like being in the studio alone, but they also like being amongst their colleagues and going to openings and museums and joining together and celebration and all kinds of things. And a lot of artists are into theater and music and dance. I mean, they love danza. They love, they love all kinds of art forms. So not being public was very difficult for a lot of people. I decided to take on um, a study. I took on a series of studies uh, to um, learn a few things that I was interested in. Um, I began reading, as I've been telling you, I've been reading, I've been doing a pretty serious um, study where I read the biography of an artist, then I read all the works of the artist, then I read uh, the memoirs of the artist, then I watch all the movies made from the memoirs and movies of the artist, or I read all the plays and I watch all the plays on YouTube. I do a full study of the work of an artist to understand their life and how they managed which was very entertaining and quite wonderful. So study. When you have time unto yourself, it's time for introspection. It's time for intellectual investigation. It's time for um, reorganization. It's time for, you know, if this, I mean, if you have a, an illness that uh, does not allow you to leave the house, what are you going to do with yourself? You need to occupy yourself with things that are meaningful to your growth meaningful to the continuation of your work and your dedication. So I began reading, I began uh, painting things brown all over the place. I bought some news about a, about a gun to start spraying things. I began yes. devising uh, the, uh, the, the new, the new op objects of opulence installation, devising it, redevising it, making experimentations, doing experimentations, failing and succeeding, failing and succeeding. Of course, in terms of the pandemic itself, um, a lot of artists lost not a lot of opportunities. I lost opportunities myself. And you just have to let things go. That's what I mean, be flexible. I just had to let things go, realize that it was nothing that I had any control of at all, to delve myself into my work and into my study and into relationships with people in any way that I could find them, the best way that I could find them. And I developed a new business around uh, Zoom. Uh, Zoom came and Zoom was there and suddenly consultations mm -hmm. became very easy. I saved a lot of money from not having to travel. Traffic in Los Angeles is horrendous. Uh, gas right. prices are going up. And all of a sudden Zoom was the way that people were willing to meet. So I developed a new business. I uh, spent a great deal of time in the studio. I love to cook. I love the kitchen and I love to cook. So I practiced. You know, it was all this self, a lot of self-development. I had to allow my, my, my children to, uh, you know, because everybody was really afraid for children at the very beginning. They were very afraid for small children. And this is, this is logical. You know, this is quite logical. So I couldn't see some people that I really wanted to see for quite some time, and I had to be flexible about that. I developed a way to communicate with people through writing, actually writing letters, an old wow. art that's just been lost where you buy cards and you actually write a letter and tell somebody the news and you put mm -hmm. it in an envelope and, you know, and you put it in the <laughs> and somebody gets something in the mail and it's, it's exciting for children. It's exciting for everyone to receive something. So I developed yeah. new ways of communicating, new ways of finding uh, knowledge that I really wanted. And I, of course I um, wore a mask everywhere I went. I got vaccinated as soon as I could. I'm triple vaccinated. I never got COVID. God help me that I never receive it. I'm very careful with my health. Uh, you need to be very careful. I, I encourage all the women and men watching today to please be careful with yourself. Uh, 
health is the center of many things. And without good health, you really can be uh, handicapped in terms of making your dreams come true. So flexibility and imagination and inventiveness uh, and curiosity to learn new things really helped me through, um, what is it, almost three years of being here. Right. Well, now we're going out now and I'm careful, right. but I'm, right. enjoying, I'm enjoying being with Circle again. Amazing. I think um, really key suggestions. That's overall kind of for life in general, aside from <laughs> aside from um, the question specifically about around quarantine. You know, you mentioned self-reflection, self-growth, flexibility, reading, learning and building deep relationships um, in different ways, even way, yeah. you know, instead of our social ways or the ways that we've been doing it, even the writing. And so and through generations and building that. So it's really beautiful to hear that. Um, Lily kind of replies, yes, I studied and read new business plan recreated. Letters is on our list now and flexibility. Thank you so much. So a really great um, interaction. We love this platform where we're able to kind of share with each other, interact even, you know, another thing that came out of um, the quarantine for us was this, this platform that we use to go on YouTube at the same time and live on Facebook and we're able to interact with people and have that conversation that's a little bit different from Zoom, but also um, records and connects with that. So Linda Maestra, we're so thankful um, for your time. Um, we know you're a busy woman with amazing responsibilities and tasks and families and many things on the to-do list. And so thank you so much for being a part of our We Rise um, Mujeres de My East programming. We Rise is a online ofrenda, a series of events uh, for well-being sponsored by We Rise, and it really is an initiative of the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health that encourages well-being and healing through art, connection, and community engagement, and who else but um, our Maestra Linda Vallejo to share some of her insight and information, to connect, um, to know more about some of our programming or also other programming throughout May. You can go to WeRise.LA or MujeresMais.com to see our full programming of May um, you'll see workshops, circles tomorrow. There's uh, tomorrow and Thursday. There's talking circles, um, and uh, Wednesday um, a writing um, or a book presentation and focus by Jessica Calderon. So so many programs um, that you can check out. That will also the talking circles won't be live. <laughs> Those are closed, but um, some of our programs are. So if you want to repost this, um, do use our uh, our hashtags. Check it out. Um, we love to incorporate and connect with you all. So please do repost, share it with a friend, send it um, in a group or repost in a group as it is on Facebook. If anybody um, on YouTube, if anybody is in need of support in any way, there is the LA County helpline. Um, there is, you know, ways of helping each other through art, through circulos, through spaces. So we're offering those through Mujeres de Maiz, but also we wanted to, offer, of course, share that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we rise.la, mujeresdemais.com, as well as, of course, I wanted to share Linda's information one more time. Um, and thank you all for joining us. Many blessings, Linda, to you and your family, to all of your projects, prayers, thoughts, and um, art. Oh, Muchas gracias. You. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much. Many blessings. Have a good one. Take care. You too. Take good care, everyone. <laughs>